welcome back to this session on community analysis. So, last day we have already defined uh, what a community means both philosophically as well as we have tried to give a quantitative definition also. And then we have uh, seen that there are various techniques by which you can do community detection. We have been looking into agglomerative techniques and then as we proceed in the uh, next few lectures, we will see uh, other different methods like the bisection method and the spectral uh, bisection methods for doing community analysis. So, today we will start off with a local al algorithm based on agglomeration. So, have a look at this slide. So, basically this algorithm was proposed by Bagro in 2008. Now, uh, the basic idea of this algorithm is that in a network you actually keep track of two sets. One set is the set C which is the community and the other set is the set B which is the border from where new nodes enter into the community. And in this way at every iteration you actually agglomerate. Okay. So, now the decision of uh, putting a node from B from the border to the community is based on a metric called outwardness. So, basically this is a local metric. So, you look at the local properties of the nodes that are in the border okay, and then based on that you make a decision whether you should include that particular node in the community or not. And in this way you keep on including newer and newer nodes in the community and the community grows. And then finally, you can keep track of this whole process and draw the agglomerative uh, picture of the community structure in the form of a dendrogram. Okay. So, the defin so, uh, so, now the first thing that we need to do is to define this local metric of outwardness. So, how do we define this local metric? So, this metric is defined as follows. So, you basically compute this as the number of neighbors of a node V outside C minus the number of neighbors of the node V inside C. This difference divided by the degree of the node V which may be denoted by K V. So, basically you see what is the fraction of ages from the node V that is going inside the community and what is the fraction of ages that is lying in the border. Okay. And you make a difference of these two and you express this as a ratio of the total number of ages that go out of the node V that is the degree of V. Okay. So, you express this as in terms of this ratio and therefore, if outwardness is low is very low, then that would mean that the node V should be included in the community. in the community C. So, that is the basic idea. Now, let us look at the slides. So, here I have for ease of understanding I have put a simple very simple example. Let us consider these two nodes node i and node j and we can compute the outwardness score of each of these nodes. Say for instance, for node i the number of ages that are going inside the community is only 1 whereas, that are outside the community are 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, you make a difference of 4 minus 1 that is 3 by the total sorry 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, the number of ages going out is 5 whereas, the number of ages going inside the community is 1. So, you make a difference 5 minus 1 that is 4 that is normalized by the total degree of the node i which is 6 in this case. So, that makes the outwardness score as 4 by 6 which is 2 by 3. So, I write 
omega which is the notation for outwardness core omega i is equal to 2 by 3 for this case. Similarly, you can compute the outwardness core for the node j. So, for node j you see all the edges are going inside the community. So, basically this is you can also intuitively understand that node j is a much better candidate to be inserted in the community than node i. So, because all its edges are going inside the community. So, here if you calculate the outwardness the degree is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and also the total number of edges going inside the community is 4. So, you have and there is no edge going outside the community. So, it is 0 minus 4 by 4 which is minus 1. So, therefore, the agglomerative greedy algorithm is summarized in the next three steps of the slides. So, in the first step what you do? You choose a starting node, you arbitrarily choose a starting node S and you put this S in the community C. Okay. Now, B is basically the neighbors of S, B which is the set of border nodes is nothing but the neighbors of the one distant neighbors of S. Now, you inspect every individual node from B, okay. say you inspect every individual node V from B and you check among all these nodes in B, which is the node that has the minimum outwardness score. And depending on that the say if, if, it, if it is the node V that has the minimum um, outwardness score for instance in this case the for these two nodes considering these two nodes jo J has the minimum outwardness. So, you include J inside the community. Accordingly you update the community set. So, now your community will have will become S comma J whereas, B will be the neighbors of S plus the neighbors of J okay. and now you repeat the computation of the outwardness and you keep doing so unless and until you have included all the nodes in the network. So, in the next slides I show, show you a simulation of this process. So, let us take this example network. The red node that you see at the center is basically the node only node in the community in the first step and all the blue nodes are its one distant neighbors. Okay. So, now from this step if you execute this algorithm in the next step you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 nodes which get inside the community because of their low outwardness score. The other nodes become the border node and you keep on doing this continuously until and unless you have actually covered the entire network. You have actually subsumed all the nodes in the network and in this way after the process is complete you know exactly what are the nodes that got inserted into the community one by one and then from this information you can actually construct the dendrogram which gives you a fantastic notion of the community structure. Okay. So, this is the second example of agglomerative approach based on local uh, measure of outwardness. The third approach that we will look into will be on based on the idea of bisection. So, so far we have only looked into agglomerative approaches, now we will look into one bisective approach. So, as I already told you earlier that in the bisective approach what you have is basically you start with the full network with all its nodes and edges. Now, you find out candidate edges which are actually standing at the border of say two communities, okay, two or more communities and you basically cut these edges to in order to de uh, decompose the network into sub structures or communities. So, the question here is therefore, how to identify edges that stand at the border of two or more communities basically bridge edges. So, how do I find out or compute bridge edges? So, one of the classic examples was proposed by uh, Newman and Garvin one of his uh, students. So, uh, they proposed this idea of edge betweenness. So, if you remember we discussed the idea of betweenness centrality in one of our earlier lectures. So, where we said that uh, uh, so, we computed between the centrality by estimating what is the total number of shortest paths that actually pass through that node between any pair of vertices by the total number of shortest paths between that pair of vertices. Okay. That was the basic idea of between the centrality and actually if there is 
a node in the network through which a large number of short paths pass, then that means this is like a, a articulation point in the network or a cut point in the network that is like it actually connects two basic two. So, th that is what we saw earlier that it connects probably one or more modular components of the network. Okay, that is the only individual node in the network which actually connects multiple parts of the network. Okay. So, here we actually translate that idea of the twinness, but now to edges rather than looking into nodes, we now look into the number of shortest paths that actually pass through a particular edge rather than a node. Now, if there is a large number of shortest path passing through a particular edge, then probably that edge is actually sitting as a bridge edge between various components. Okay. So, that is the basic idea. So, two components get separated by a edge if the edge betweenness of that particular edge is high, that is the hypothesis. So, based on this hypothesis, Garvin and Newman actually proposed a very simple algorithm. So, the steps of the algorithm can be summarized as follows. So, step 1 is calculate edge betweenness course. for all edges in the network. The next step is to find the edge that has the highest edge betweenness. and remove it from the network. The third step is to recalculate the edge betweenness course after the highest edge has been removed. And number 4 is repeat from step 2 until no edges. no edges are left to be removed. So, it is a very simple algorithm if you see. So, the it, it comprises four steps. The first step is actually you calculate the edge betweenness for every individual edge in the network. Now, you rank the edges based on the edge betweenness and remove the edge which has the highest edge betweenness. Then you again recalculate the edge betweenness after you have removed that edge, you again recalculate the edge betweenness of all the other edges in the network and you repeat the same process from the step 2 until and unless you have no edges left. So, in this way if what you, if you if you think intuitively, you are actually bisecting the network iteratively okay, and dividing it into smaller and smaller sub parts. And if you keep track of this execution, you can again draw the dendrogram accurately. Okay. So, now there is a question here. So, if you look at the third step, this is actually the most expensive step of this process. It is one of the very, very expensive steps. So, in general, if you have to calculate the edge betweenness, you have to actually calculate the all pair the shortest path between every pair of nodes okay, in order to calculate the edge betweenness for each individual edge. Now, that itself is time consuming and on top of this, we will actually compute the times, but before that intuitively also on top of that computation, you also have to recalculate this edge betweenness every time. But this 
actually is very important for the performance of the algorithm. Why? Because actually the authors did two types of two variations of the algorithm. In one where they had this step 3 include step 3 and in the other they did not have the step 3, no step 3. So, that means in the first case they were recalculating the edge betweenness after every removal of edge, whereas in the other ver version of the algorithm they actually calculated the edge betweenness once and then based on that they kept on removing the edges. Now, this second method might be problematic, because you can say for instance there are two components like this okay. and say this is C 1 and this is C 1, C 2 and say there is there are actually two edges, okay. there are actually two edges connecting them, but by some means what happens is that most of the shortest paths flow through this particular edge. Okay. Most of the shortest path between these two components flow through this particular edge. Then this particular edge will have a high betweenness and it will get removed, but if you then do not recalculate the edge betweenness, if you depend on the older values of this edge, uh, the edge betweenness, this edge will never be identified okay, until and unless it is very late. Okay. So, you might not identify this edge and there might be some internal edges which have a lower betweenness somehow, which have a higher betweenness somehow uh, that would get removed even before this particular edge gets removed. So, a uh, more practical division of the network is missed actually even before you could actually identify it. Okay. So, because, because if you have if you have a small edge like this okay, inside the community inside one of the sub communities which actually divides the sub -company community in further communities even before we could have discovered these two larger more logically correct partitioning. Okay. This is a problem. So, the I reiterate the problem once again basically what happens is let us say that there are two edges that connect these two communities. Okay. Now, fortunately or unfortunately most of the shortest paths tend to pass through one of these. So, this actually ranks high in edge betweenness and you comfortably remove it, okay. but then the other edge never gets tracked, because you are not recomputing. If you had you recomputed next time this edge would qualify as the edge through which most of the shortest paths pass, but this you cannot identify because you are not recalculating. And there might be some other internal edges which have a higher betweenness than this particular edge earlier. Okay, and that gets removed and that might fracture this particular component C 1 further even before we have identified a more logical partitioning between C 1 and C 2. Okay. So, this is a very practical problem and that is why the process, process of recalculation is very very important. Okay. So, now if you look at the complexity of the algorithm, this is a very very uh, time hungry algorithm, because see for a, for every iteration you have to calculate all pair shortest paths okay, and that you have to do for a large number of iterations okay, at least when, uh, as long as there are no edges in the network. Okay. So, this is a very time hungry process. So, and the question is like if you have a very large graph say billions of nodes, even if you can make it a little bit more efficient that actually helps. So, for the next part of the lecture we will try to see how you can make the algorithm efficient by reducing some computation overhead. Okay. So, as we have said you have to, so if you look at in general if you look at this algorithm you have to find out all pair shortest paths, okay. shortest paths. shortest paths between every pair of edges. Okay. Now, if we use say simple BFS algorithm okay, to compute the shortest path between a pair, between a single pair, then 
the BFS algorithm will be order m between 1 pair, okay, where m is the number of edges. Right. Then, if you have n square such pairs, then the total computation time, the total comp complexity should be order of m n square, because there are n square such pairs. Okay. Now, you have to run this iteration for m steps, m steps of the algorithm, which would lead to a total complexity of order m square n square. Okay. Now, even if we assume that the graph is sparse, in general as we have seen that real world networks are sparse. So, graph is sparse, that would mean that m is roughly of the order of n. That means, in general the complexity of the algorithm is roughly equal to order n 4. Okay. So, this is a very time hungry algorithm as you see. So, and therefore, in the rest of the lecture we will try to see how we can make this algorithm efficient. We will basically try to reduce this complexity to at least one order less and we will try to reduce it to order n cube. Now, in order to do this, we actually use employ the concept that when you use BFS, to compute all the shortest paths from a single source S. Okay. So, in one BFS you can actually find out all the shortest paths starting from a source node S. So, this is the idea that we will leverage and this actually will take you order m time and we will try to see how we can leverage on this in order to compute the edge betweenness course for every individual edge. Now, we will start off with a with a simple case and then we will try to see the more general case. Okay. So, the simple case is as follows. So, the simple case is the following. So, what you do is that we assume here that there is only a single shortest path from S to every other node. Note that this is not true in general, but we will start off with this simple assumption and then we will try to make a generalized version of this. Okay. We will start, we will see how we solve this simple case, we tackle this simple case and then we will see the more general case, which addresses every possibilities. Okay. So, so, we assume that there is only a single shortest path from S to every other node. That means, from S we can construct a shortest path tree. Okay. So, since there is only a single shortest path, we are assuming that there is only a single shortest path to every other node from S, then we can construct. So, this would actually result in a shortest path tree and construct a shortest path tree by the BFS. Now, given this shortest path tree, the question is how to calculate the edge betweenness. Again, that is not very difficult. We will look at an example 
but let us first write the algorithm. The algorithm is very simple. So, you first traverse to the leaf of the tree, that is to those nodes through which shortest paths to no other nodes pass. Okay? You basically go to the leaf of this tree, the leaf nodes of this tree are those nodes through which no other shortest path to through which no other shortest path pass through any other node in the tree. Okay? So, it is a very, very simple definition of leaf nodes in a tree. So, now from there we have to work upwards okay. and in every step what you do is you add 1 plus the sum of this course on the neighboring edges immediately below these edges. Where we have set the score for the edges connected to the leaves equal to 1. So, basically to the edges that are connected directly to the leaf, we set a score to 1 and then we work upwards and at every upward step what we do is we for every individual edge that we consider we add 1 plus whatever score comes from the immediate lower level of the edges. So, in this way you compute this course and basically if you see intuitively these scores are nothing but the representative edge betweenness or the path counts basically the number of shortest paths passing, passing through that edge. So, let us take a small example and see. So, let us have this node S here. So, to so this is a leaf, this is a leaf and this is a leaf, these are leaf nodes. Okay. So, to each of the leaf nodes what we do to the edges directly attached to them we set a score of 1. Now, we work upward for instance this particular edge we work upward we have 1 plus this weight 1 that is equal to 2. For this edge we have 1 plus this edge weight 1 plus this edge weight 2 that is equal to 4 and for this edge we have 1 plus this edge weight equal to 2. So, in this way you basically compute the path counts the, that pass through every individual edge and this actually is proportional to the edge betweenness. Now, you do it for from all the sources considering every node in the network as sources and therefore, after you have finished this step you find the total sum of all the path counts across a particular edge that actually gives its contribution to the edge betweenness. Okay. So, in this way you can compute the edge betweenness in case it is a shortest path tree. So, in the next part of the lecture you will see the more generalized case.